Feet. As we lift up our hands to the Almighty God and begin to appreciate Him who had brought us to His feet, the one who helped us, the one who lifted us, the one who woke us up this morning, let's begin to give Him praise. Wonderful Father. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Ancient of Days, 
Lord, we are gathered here to acknowledge you. Our Ebenezer, our beginning, and our ending. You are worthy to be praised. There is no one like unto thee. The maker of heaven and hell. The one who speaks and it is done. The one who commanded and it stood fast. The sea saw him, the sea fled. And the mountain disappeared in his presence. Worthy, worthy, worthy. We bless you, Lord. We honor you, Almighty God. We glorify you today. You are worthy of our praise. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. You are wonderful. Thank you, Father. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O Lord. You are you are wonderful. You are worthy, O Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O Lord. You are wonderful.
Is this not the fast that I have chosen? That you remove the band of wickedness. There are people that are bound with wickedness. There are people that the enemy chain in wickedness. There are people that are victim of wickedness. But hear this. In this service this morning, every chain of wickedness, every band of wickedness, the Lord shall destroy it in the name of Jesus. I like you to believe God that something great will happen to you. Nobody can come to his presence and not be blessed. Nobody comes to his presence and return back the same way. Jesus is the story changer. And you have come to meet him today. Certainly. Certainly. You shall be a candidate of deliverance. You shall be a candidate of deliverance. I like you to gather your strength together. God is good at all times. God is faithful even to the very end. He will never permit your enemies to rejoice over you. Can I 
hear you shout this prayer with a loud voice. Don't let anybody's voice rise above your voice. Say, powers that are gathered together to mock me. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Powers that are gathered together to mock me. Scatter. 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 In the name of Jesus. The powers that are gathered to mock me. In the name of the Lord. Scatter. 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 In the name of Jesus. Any power anywhere that are gathered together to mock me. In the name of the Lord. Scatter by fire. Scatter by fire. Scatter by fire. In the name of Jesus. Any power that is gathered together anywhere to Attack me. Scatter. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, they are scattered. Father, we give you all the glory. And all the praise. And all the worship. For this day that you have made. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Anyone who is here this morning with every load, with body, anyone who is here this morning that is expecting deliverance, that is expecting your touch, oh God, arise and touch them by your fire. Do something awesome in our midst. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Let somebody say loud, Amen. Please take your seat. God bless you. I want to thank God for this honor to be here today. I want to thank my Father and the Lord for giving me this platform to stand. You are welcome to this the Happy Home program. And this is where we gather every month to discuss matters that concerns the home. And this morning, by the mercies of God, uh, we are looking at sites that you may not be building but destroying. Signs that you are not building but you are destroying. It will be sad that somebody has built and then using his hand to pull it down. It will be sad to be the tamarind that is eating of the wood of one's life. And then it will be sad if one becomes the enemy that is waging war against him or herself. We're going to look at two scriptures very quickly. Proverbs 141. Proverbs 41 says, Every wise woman buildeth her house. But the foolish block it down with her hands. Every wise woman buildeth a house. But the foolish block it down with her hands. It also means that there could be some wise men, 
wise women. And the Bible says the wise men and the wise women they will build their house. If you turn your Bible to Matthew 16, Matthew 19. We just look at verse 6. Matthew 19. Verse 6. Wherefore, there are no more twins, but one, one flesh. Wherefore, there are no more twins, but one flesh. Well, therefore, God has joined together. Let no man put asunder. Marriage, we said, is a covenant relationship between a man and a woman. With the exclusion of all others. Marriage is a long life process. Marriage is a man and a woman agreeing to love each other and forsaking others. Marriage is a man and a woman living and cleaving together. Marriage is the doing of the law. Once married, it is forever married. It's for life. That marriage remains. The Bible says God hates putting away. God hates separation. Christian marriage is a mother after Christ. The the Christian marriage is a mother after Christ. That is just just as Jesus is the head of the church, husband of the church. So the husband is the head of his wife. And therefore, it must glorify God. It must be a witness to the unbelieving world. And then it must draw people to God. It must one glorify God. It must two, it must be a witness to the unbelieving world. And and then, it must be a mother. It must be an attraction to the outside world. It, it must attract the unbelievers. It must attract the young ones. That's, that's the, 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 the three important purposes. The Bible, which is the word of God, is our working manual that guides us in this process of marriage. There you find the roles that is to be played by everyone. And that is why as a child of God, you must be acquainted with the word of God. You must know the word of God in and out. You must study it, you must read it, and you must meditate on it. Say, so your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against A man shall not fail to love his wife. And a woman shall not fail to submit to her husband. Say, husband, love your wife. And wives, make sure you submit to your husband. Respect your husband, honor your husband. Marriage is not 50-50 Arrangement. Not 50 50 arrangement. The husband perform 50 percent, the wife perform 50 percent. No, everyone is to perform 100 percent. It is 100% rule. And you must make sure you perform your role fully. And leave the other person to perform his or her. No discount. 
Everything must be done. And all conflicts must be resolved using God's word. All conflicts, all disagreements must be resolved according to the word of God. Marriage require commitment, devotion, hard work. If you want marriage to cross five years, ten years, twenty years, thirty years, forty years and more, when you see marriages that have been on, that have been on ground for 40 years it's not cheap it's a hard work it's commitment it's dedication it's devotion and I, I tell you it is beautiful when you see a man and a woman that have stayed for this long time that's one of the beauty of life. It's one of the beauty things in life. And, and they are with that through several years together. It is not cheap. It's hard work. It's hard work. Uh, and finally, Look at those two scriptures we are It says there is no room for separation. They asked Jesus, What are we going to do? Moses told us that the husband should give her the letter of divorcement and let her go. Jesus said, No, it's not like that. In the beginning, that was not the way it is. He said, The reason it, Moses asked you to do that is because you are too hard, it's because of your rebellion, it's because of you not wanting to change, it's because of your stubbornness. Said, From the beginning, it's not like that. Say, and for this purpose, a man and his woman shall be joined together. And that whosoever God has joined together, let no man, let no system, let no organization, let no institution, let no family, let no friend put us on that. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 10 1 Corinthians chapter 7 we read verse 10 1 Corinthians chapter 7 Please, I'd like you to look at this verse. And unto the married, I command, yet not I, but the Lord. There are times you will read your Bible. And the apostle Paul will let and will let you know. And I will say this one. This is what I feel. This is what I feel. Say, but this one is from the Lord. It's a command from God. It's not hearsay. It's not woman feeling. First Corinthians chapter seven verse ten. Say, but unto the married, I command, command yet not high, but the Lord. Because let not he, the wife I am depart from our spouse. It's a command. It's not a wish. It's not somebody's feeling. It's a command from the Lord. Therefore, 
Whosoever God has joined together, let no one put us on that. Now, this morning, it is important to you ask yourself are you building or you are pulling down? Are you gathering together or you are scattering? The Bible says, The house that is divided against itself. That house cannot stand. Are you building? Are you scattering? Any child of God who hopes that one day that he will, he will give account of his life, who will like to see God face to face, he will be afraid to do what he doesn't want. He say he hates putting away. He hates separation. Whether it's financial separation, whether it's geographical separation, whether it's emotional separation, because there are people who are still living under the same roof. Still live like husband and wife. Living in the same house, but emotional. They are separated. They are torn apart. They are different persons. They are no longer one. Whether it is sex separation. Because, because this day you hear people say, we, we are together under this house. We live in this same house. But they are separated. Maybe separation of rooms. The other person is living the other place. The, another one is living another place. Apparently, they are still inside the same house. But, but, but they are separated. Or maybe the separation of communication. It may also be the, 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 the separation of commitment. Marriage is about commitment. What, what are you putting him? What are you putting him? And so this morning, people of God, it's important you check yourself. There are a few points I'm going to mention. Perhaps you are the one troubling that marriage. Perhaps you are the enemy of that hope. I pray this morning. Not anyone here. And the enemy wants you to scatter your house. Or scatter your home. The enemy shall be disappointed in the name of Jesus. Number one. Too much commitments to one's career. Over commitment to one's career. Sports, career, they are good professionals. They want to pass exams. They are good. Office work. They are good. They want to pass ICANN. They are good. They want to pass hair, CC, hair exam. You are good. So, all these ones are good. But not at the expense of your spouse. There are People moving from place to place. Going for the other meeting. Going for another meeting. They are not concerned about the other person. No time to be together. No time to stay together. It Pulls down, destroys. There are, there are people who call themselves workaholic. 
they have gone to work for money till night. And instead of leaving the work, the office work for the office. Now the work is also brought home. Workaholic. No time. No discussion. No, no, no sitting down to agree. It's a destroyer of hope. And it has destroyed many homes. I pray. May you not be the hand that is destroying your home in the name of Jesus. Number two, the unrealistic expectation. Unrealistic expectation. Many people come into marriage with too high expectations, bogus expectations, thinking that this person will meet all these needs. Brothers and sisters, there is no human being that can meet all your needs. That is the truth. Marriage solves some problems, but also brings other problems. That there is no husband that will solve all your problems. That, that there is no woman that will solve all your problems. Please note that there is no woman that is available for sex seven days. And 24 hours. That is unrealistic expectation. And, and that to leave the matter of your happiness and joy in life. In the hand of a human being. Is the beginning of frustration. God is the only one that is called the Almighty. And he can solve all problems. Can meet all needs. Can do anything. There is no human being like that. That can solve all this. Please note them. Number three is infidelity. The sexual need of the man and the woman can only be met within the context of marriage. And that when you are becoming unnecessarily too close unto an opposite sex is the beginning of disaster. I used to have a friend some time ago. Was a dynamic man of God. We used to see him as our hero. This man loved the Lord. This man had the zeal for the work of God. This man would come off, come home and share testimonies. I just went to this place, I minister, this is what happened. And those of us who were very young were looking forward to be like him. He was coming from a Muslim home. And when he became a born again, there is nothing that his parents did not do. They did so many things to frustrate him. They actually did so many things. But instead of any of these to stop him, he was waxing strong. He was getting strong. And he was doing well. But after some time, he got a job. And because the family stopped all the support, the finances they were giving to him, so he now had to depend on himself. But when he got the job, everybody was excited. So 
So one of these days he was coming from the office. And then he was sitting in one corner of the of the bus. And then one lady just by his side. And the lady was crying. And then he asked the lady, What's the problem? And, and the lady said, uh, Husband just chased out of the house. And I don't know what he told the lady. But then he came back and said, Bro. And then he told us what happened. He said, You know what I'm going to do? Say, I have a house. I don't stay in the house. I'm going to help that lady. I'm going to bring that lady inside. And because I am doing night work. And the lady is doing the day work. So, so when I will be leaving, that's when she will be coming in. And I said, what, what is this? What is the meaning of this? He said, you, are you mean you don't trust me? A man of God? You mean you are suspecting me? Anyway, he went ahead. And what I discovered, the, the going out, when he was supposed to, they actually started it. He will go out, the lady will come in. But then I discovered after some time he will now stay back. And that was how this man left the faith. And what makes it so bad that if you are talking to him about Christ he does not understand again. It looks as if the devil just did it to close his eyes. So, so when you talk up to him about evil salvation, it looks like it's a strange thing to him. I'm not sure this man has come back to when you ignore all the signs and the Holy Ghost is warning you you are getting too close you are breaking all the rules that heaven has said to help you something is telling you don't go for that but you kept on going the head may not be palatable I pray for anyone here. Every agenda of the enemy to make you be the enemy of your life shall be frustrated in the name of Jesus. I like you to close your eyes where you are and talk to the Lord. Father, I will not be an enemy to myself anything in my life that will expose me to darkness that will stop me in this journey Lord deliver me open your mouth and begin to pray begin to talk to the Lord whatsoever it is Father whatsoever it is that will stop me on this journey destroy it I don't want it I will not become history while I am still alive in the name of the Lord open your mouth and begin to pray and begin to talk to God open your mouth and talk to God I will not be an enemy to myself I will not be an enemy to myself I will not put down what God has built I will build my home and the gate of darkness will not prevail against it I will not be a casual Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. While you are seated, I'd like you to shout this prayer. Say it loud and clear. Say, I prophesy. I didn't hear your voice. Can you say it loud and clear? Can you shout it at the top of your voice? Restoration. Power. 
power into my marriage. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray like that. I prophesy power restoration to my marriage. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy power restoration to my marriage. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy power into my marriage. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy. Power to my marriage. Restoration in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Say all my stolen marital blessings. Wherever you are, manifest. Open your mouth and begin to pray. All my marital blessings, wherever you are, manifest by fire in the name of Jesus. All my marital blessings, breakthroughs, manifest in the name of Jesus. All my marital blessings, manifest by fire in the name of Jesus. Manifest, 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 manifest. In the name of Jesus, manifest by fire. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Rise up on your feet. And say this prayer. Whether you have children yet or you are not, you don't have. This is time to pray. To pray for that child, for that, for that ch- 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 child or your children. And so, get yourself ready. Say, I prophesy. My children shall not escort their mates. In the market square of life. Say, my Uh, children shall not escort their mates in the market square of life. Open your mouth and begin to pray that prayer. I profess Jesus' mighty name we pray. Can you say this one loud and clear? If you know the name of your child or the name of your children, I'd like you to mention them now. As you are praying the prayer, just mention, say, my children. Hear the word of the Lord. You shall not be vagabonds. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray for your children. Wherever you are, my children, you shall not be vagabond in the market space of life. You shall not be vagabond. My children, my children, you shall not be vagabond. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let us sit down. You want to thank God again for this day. And we are pleased to welcome you to yet another segment of question and answer in our monthly Sunday family forum. It is as usual a place where God is helping us to deliver some superior health benefits that you make your marriage grow and become stronger 
This forum is so equally used as a reminder to us that Jesus is the anchorage. Is our second courage. And that all our marital responsibility are anchored to that rock of ages. Before you leave here today, I pray that you will have new experiences that will make your the life an aroma of praise to the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We have some few questions. Uh, but before then, let me remind you that uh, we are still at uh, Alabamiji office there. And the uh, counseling time or period still remain the same. Uh, Monday, 11, uh, Monday 11. And uh, on Wednesday, the same time. And on a special day like this, you will be expected to come and tell it to Jesus there who will frustrate all the vice of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. Our email number still remain the same to MFM Mountain of Fire MFM, MFM Home Ministry at gmail.com mfm or ministry at gmail.com now um, the first question really uh, has to do with uh, a woman um, when it goes thus I am a member of this church MFM, and I got married uh, since 2009, in two years after my husband traveled out of the country, uh, at first there was no contact between two of us. And uh, after two years, he called to inform me that he is getting married again. Uh, and sometimes he wants me to send uh, my daughter to him which I refused. Presently he wants me to come over to stay with him to stay with him. But the issue now is that he is still married to the other woman. Please advise me on what to do about this issue. Uh, brother and sister, you will know that this is a common phenomenon. Uh, in our climb here. And it is so worrisome how couples, particularly young couples, are compromising their marriage to get green cards or working permits overseas. And I guess, my sister, you are, I mean, your marriage is one of the victims of this adventure. I want to add that processes involved to achieve this objective have become one big, you know, thriving industry in our country and over there. The processes that they go through in achieving this objective of going there for a green card has become a big and thriving industry. Yet it remains a very clandestine activity. We are a lot of money changes hands. We are emphasizing this because a lot of you from the counseling room we have seen that a lot of us 
because of the economic situation in the country has become victims of all these type of things. And so illegal so far or this practice has become rampant and you are probably not ignorant about it that even you may be aware you may have given consent to this thing that you are asking for possibly uh, while this is a plot for economic survival in the host country, maybe America, London, wherever, you must warn that all of this comes with a big risk of trading off your marriage with a strange woman. Of man, where he takes up the ownership of your husband, sometimes of your children, by adoption. You will be at the mercy of the strange partner. And we don't think this is what you are expecting in your marriage. Particularly as a, as a Christian. We have just listened to our Father in the Lord whether you want to build or destroy your marriage. Your attitude, your response to this type of thing will qualify you as a builder or otherwise. What must I do? What must I do? The sister is asking, what must she do? Uh, in this case, if you have to travel there to join your husband, we advise that you verify whether or not your husband is still married to this woman. Or whether they are still living together as husband and wife. Knowing that as a Christian, you cannot legally married cannot be legally married to you and the strange woman so one thing that is sure is that if the husband is sincere about his family joining him that he should do it right and as a true christian and as a true christian he must have commitment more for his wife rather than for a strange woman over there the choice seems to be yours but we advise you protect your home and your husband for what shall really, really profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses its soul. May God bless you, my sister. Question two is a uh, straight question. Said, I have somebody I am in love with, but God has not given me go ahead. <laughs> what can I do? You have... Uh, you have you, I think you are aware of what you should do my brother if God has not given you a go ahead who can give you you are advised to pray therefore until you hear from God you are, you are here you continue to pray until he speaks God speaks specifically. If you have a slight problem in knowing how to receive the will of God, 
we, you can, we can assist you. You so can man, meet us at our office and we try to give you spiritual support as to achieving this without harming yourself. So Bani should relate to more beauty, but lot of the law and lot of more if you're not for you, it was a fist you are sitting on your lower. Avoid listening to yourself. A year of fun at the mag bow on the rise of let God speak. A jack your lord and kill sort of me and show you his will for a divine partner. Kill see if he fair a fun and it's here of fake you feel honey. Amen. Amen. May God bless you. Praise the Lord. Okay, hallelujah. We have a question here. It says, Good day, sir. I am married to a divorcee. Which I knew she was divorced. But I did not know the implication until I came across the book of Matthew 5, 31 to 32. Now we have two children. And the man who divorced her is still alive. What do I do? I'm a member of MFM. Praise the Lord. Okay, hallelujah. Let us look at what Matthew 5, 31 to 32 says. Matthew 5, verses 31 and 32. It had been said, Jesus is the one speaking, Whatsoever shall, whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, Causes her to commit adultery. But I say unto you, 32, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causes her to commit adultery. What and whosoever shall marry her that is divorced committed adultery. This is what is written, that's what the scripture says in Matthew 5, verses 31 and 32. So, this is the position of the divorcee and the person that goes ahead to marry one that is divorced. However, to address our question, thank God for the fresh revelation and the insights in the word of God given by God and the Holy Spirit to this brother. The Bible says, For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the world, the sorrow of the world worketh death. The sorrow of the world, walked Second Corinthians seventeen. It goes to show that the Holy Spirit is indicting a godly walk in the life of this brother. So the question is, what should the brother do? Haven't come to the knowledge 
of this truth what should it do we assume that the brother is um, hasn't told us so much about the other husband he, he has not told us about the other husband all we know is that the brother is alive the previous husband is alive but if he has remarried or moved on we, ha- we do not have this information however we believe that this godly sorrow is already causing some maybe having the brother to start thinking of what to do either to dissolve this marriage or to restitute what should he do in this circumstance? And restitution should not be for its own sake. It should depend on the merit of each person's circumstance. You said you were ignorant when you married this divorcee. And so the word of God says the time of ignorance God overlooked. But already you are married to this person with two children. God is not the author of confusion. And so setting apart this relationship also makes you a divorcee. So if you leave this present woman you are married to, the woman becomes twice divorced, and you become a fresh divorcee. So, and the children become maybe homeless, or they will no longer be brought up under godly care. So our counsel to you, brother, is that you go before God. You and your wife, go before God and bring about quality repentance. And be assured that you have been forgiven. Accept God's forgiveness and also refuse to live any longer in guilt. Like we have said, God is, God is not the author of confusion. He will not expect you to leave your wife, marry another person, and so start confusion all over. So once you have assured yourself that God has forgiven you, serve the Lord freely and leave your situation with Him. God bless you. The second question is this. A young man in MFN Ask the lady from another denomination in marriage. They both agreed to marry whereby the bride's price was paid. After some time, the man sends to say that he had impregnated another woman. Which was not true. It was only a strategy to discourage her. Later, a few months, 
a brother from another denomination proposed to this lady and the brother is very serious what can the sister do in this circumstance praise the Lord it is a fact that the payments of bride's price establishes a form of marriage. And so, the intending couple are advised not to hurriedly pay bride's price when they are not ready to get married. Because this usually exposes them to temptation. And some of them start sleeping together before the blessing. And the issue is if you get pregnant, no Bible believing church would wed any pregnant bride. So, but the question in this situation is this. The brother that has paid this bride's price and is no longer serious and is a member of this church and has also gone ahead to impregnate another person and has not even shown any remorse to even repent of his sin if it is true and even if it was a strategy to get out of the relationship that was not the way to go about it if it's a marriage that is not yet consummated and bright price has been paid we acknowledge that it's a form of marriage but as long as they have not had any carnal knowledge of one another the marriage has not been consummated there is a way out the, the family of the bride where the brother is no longer interested can approach the family of the would-be husband and return the bride's price that has been paid and the family sets the marriage aside and so the lady becomes free to marry somebody else. This is only a situation where a marriage has not been consummated. This is so in the eye of the law where a marriage is not consummated that is both parties are not able to have carnal knowledge of one another the, the, the state will set the marriage aside as a nullity and also the church will do the same praise the Lord so sister take the step that you need to take let your families come together and, and set the marriage aside provided the marriage has not been consummated praise the Lord there is another one here a short one somebody wants to know the difference I mean so for us to throw light on Matthew 19 9 Matthew 19:9 9. Matthew 
Matthew 19:9 is similar to Matthew 5:32 that we have read earlier. It says Matthew 19:9. And I say unto you, Jesus is the one speaking here. Whosoever shall put away his wife except it be for fornication and shall marry another committed adultery and whosoever married her which is put away doth commit adultery praise the Lord um, here the issue is Jesus is not in any way contradicting himself. Because he had said earlier that there is no circumstance that should lead to the dissolution of marriage. And as we have heard earlier today, marriage is for life. It's an internal commitment. And so it's not something that should be taken with levity. Because the consequences are grievous. And we have uh, the man of God read 1 Corinthians 7 10 to us this morning. That people should guide their marriage jealously. Because it's a commandment. That once you are married, do not seek to leave your marriage. And if you leave your marriage, you should remain unmarried. So there is no remarriage for a driver's scene. So, to throw more light on this verse, Jesus is speaking about fornication, not adultery. A man can put away his wife based on fornication. This was a Jewish tradition which in that in those days they would betroth a woman to a man and after some time they yeah. expect that this woman will be escorted to the man's house this was the case with Mary and Joseph the, the mother of Jesus she was betrothed to Joseph and later when Joseph found her with pregnancy she was assumed to have committed fornication and so Joseph could get out of that relationship could refuse to marry Mary and that was what Joseph was going to do until the Holy Spirit told him that what was in, he, in her was of the Holy Spirit and that she had not committed any fornication. So in the Jewish tradition, if a woman is betrothed to a man, and on the day of your marriage, or the day you are escorted to your husband, and you are not found to be a virgin, the man can put the woman away. But if you are already married and you are living together and the woman falls into adultery it is not a ground to put away your wife. There is a ground 
for forgiveness and to take back your wife. You forgive a woman that falls into adultery and continue in your marriage. I hope we understand. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jackie, hallelujah. We have two questions here. The first one goes, My wife and I always argue. And disagree often. On what I consider a simple matter. How can we be compatible? The answer is this. In Ephesians chapter 5 verse 21, our Lord commands us as husbands and wives, He says, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Also in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 33, he advises married couples, nevertheless, let every one of you, in particular, so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife, see that she reverence her husband. So, the issue of arguing and disagreeing often is not the perfect will of God. It is an attack of the kingdom of darkness. And uh, it is intended to bring this unity between the couple and also to break the marriage. Therefore, this couple, you are advised to resist this temptation. There is no perfect marriage anywhere in this world except the marriage between Christ and the church. This means that situations will always arise once in a while whereby a couple may have to disagree. But there is need for much wisdom in handling such situations. Arguing all the time is a sign of immaturity. It is a sign of childishness. It is a sign of selfishness. Therefore, this temptation must be resisted among couples. When such situation arises, both parties must learn to be patient with each other. Then you also need to listen to know what your partner is saying. It is bad habit to be jumping down the throat of your partner when he or she is talking. You need to listen carefully, hear what your partner is saying so that you know how to answer wisely. Both of you need to discuss issues dispassionately. You don't need to attach emotion to the discussion. You know that at times women are so emotional, before you blink your eye, they are already crying. That is not a wise approach to settling marriage issues. Look at issues neatly without attaching emotion to it. There is also need to resist anger in such situation. Because that home is your home. There is no need getting angry unnecessarily. 
and both of you when you listen to each other and discuss issues let your decisions be reasonable don't just agree because you feel you should agree let that decision be reasonable so that both of you will not regret in the future also let your decision be scriptural for example, if the argument is whether you should worship idol or not, obviously you know it is unscriptural to agree to worship idol. Therefore, you must not agree. It will help both of you to realize that you don't need the tension and you don't need the stress. Therefore, you need to help yourself. Often, it becomes necessary to keep quiet for peace's sake. And when the atmosphere becomes more convenient, then you can answer peacefully and not in anger and argument. Every Christian couple must always remember that Jesus Christ is available every time they discuss. Therefore, genuine love, care, humility, self-sacrifice must always manifest in your relationship with your spouse. Both of you are already married. And it is your responsibility to ensure that this marriage works. If this marriage does not work, it is your own failure, both of you. Therefore, you must allow the fear of God to be first in your relationship with your spouse. Please note that divorce is not an option at all. The Bible says that God hates, hates putting away. God hates divorce. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The second question goes thus. I am 60 years plus. And have six children from two wives. I separated from the first wife 24 years ago after three children. And I have made unsuccessful efforts to have her back. The second wife was a fornicator. Pastors have come in to help. But at last, give me option to make my choice. My choice is that I want to marry an MFM good believer now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> May God help us. Please help me. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Is that not interesting? An MFM believer. <laughs> After two wives. Hallelujah. And this is our response. Brother, you are not encouraged to go and marry another woman now. The two women you married are still alive. And both of them have given you six living children. Divorce is not the perfect will of God. You will see that in Malachi chapter 2 verse 16. 
Therefore, our recommendation to you is this. You need to pray serious deliverance prayers about your foundation. You need to pray serious deliverance prayers about your foundation. Because you have been receiving a lot of attacks concerning your marriage. Apparently, the problem is not with the women you have married. It's something that is following you from where you came from. Also, you need to pray for the salvation and deliverance of your present wife. So that she be delivered from the spirit of adultery. The Bible says, How many times shall your brother or your sister offend you in one day? Seventy times, seven, that is 490 times in one day. And according to the explanation we have gotten from my sister that came before me, your wife is not committing fornication but adultery. Therefore, you need to call her back, reason with her, bring her to MFM for MFM prayers. She shall be delivered from that spirit that is disturbing her. Then you will begin to enjoy your home. Please forgive her, even as God has always been forgiving you your own sins. It is not a good idea to multiply wives. You will see that in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 17 verse 17. Brother, we also encourage you to kindly come and see the happy home ministry. So that you will be assisted in depth to have this problem solved. God bless you in Jesus' name. Please don't marry a new MFM woman. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Shall we rise up? Please close your eyes. Some pronouncements shall be made now. And that is what you will experience throughout this week. It shall be so for you if your amen agrees with it. Now close your eyes. By the Spirit of the Lord and by the word of His resurrection, anyone Any you. hearing the sound of my voice now this week. Is declared the week of signs and wonders for you. In the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Ghost. I declare. That this week. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. In the name of Jesus. I declare you untouched. By any evil hand in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, 
Lift up your heads. O ye gates. And be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. Every good door shut against you this week. I command them to open in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall raise up a standard against it. This week, every satanic flood that will rise up against you shall scatter in the name of Jesus. Stretch forth your two hands now and let your amen become double. Let that amen slap the enemy back to hellfire. The Bible says, The sun shall not smite thee in the day, and the moon the night. This week, you that is hearing the sound of my voice, the sun and the moon will honor you. In the name of Jesus. Specifically, the Lord said, I should pray this particular prayer. Three times. Because it is for somebody in this meeting throughout this week. The pronouncement of tragedy that is assigned against you or any member of your family this week is cancelled forever in the name of Jesus I prayed the second time the pronouncement of tragedy that is assigned against you hearing me now or any member of your family this week is cancelled forever in the name of Jesus For the third time, which is the last time, and you are going to say a sevenfold amen. The pronouncement of tragedy that is assigned against you, hearing me now, or any member of your family, this week is totally cancelled in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Don't forget on Wednesday, the manna water program continues. You come with your water. You come fasting. And you break your fast with the water. 
Let us share the grace of fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the spirit of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Shall the grace of mercy shall follow us. Amen.